Hi, this is Jim Szymanski, Director of Public Affairs for the Washington Retail Association. Today's video report is going to be on the results of the 2015 legislative session here in Olympia. The Retail Association sorted through some 2,500 bills that were introduced this past session and came out with a series of victories really for retailers. This report is about the highlights of those victories. And I'm going to turn you over now to our legislative team to kind of give you the uh, summary of our report. Well, today, Joni and I are going to highlight a few of the bills and the important things that we worked on this legislative session. A few ones that we were able to stop and a few that we were able to get past. Uh, first and most importantly, I'm really delighted that we were able to stop any general tax increases. There was no new capital gains tax. There wasn't a carbon tax that the governor had proposed. Over $1.5 billion in new tax increases were put on the table, but we were able to stop them all. Two I want to really highlight. The first one is the non-resident sales tax exemption. Most people don't even realize it exists. What this does is allows um, individuals from states that don't have a sales tax or have a small sales tax of 3% or less to come to Washington State and shop sales tax free. So why is that a good thing and why should that be kept in place? Well, these non-residents come to retailers that are located in Washington and buy goods from them and then return to their state. So it's actually a very good book of business for our retailers in Washington State. In particular, this really impacts retailers along the Oregon-Washington border. Well, there were several proposals to A, eliminate it outright, or B, turn it into a remittance program or somebody from Oregon, for instance, would have to apply for their sales tax to be recouped and sent back to them once a year from the Department of Revenue. We felt that this would be basically eliminating the tax exemption in its entirety and would really impact those businesses that rely on out-of-state residents for their shopping. So we were happy we were able to stop that and delighted it did not pass. We do think it'll be back again next year because it's very uh, enticing for members of the legislature to gain a little bit of extra tax revenue at the expense of retailers in Washington State. The other really important um, tax exemption we were able to keep in place was the sales tax on bottled water. There were a number of attempts by legislators to put a sales tax on bottled water which is currently sales tax free. This is a very important food item and essential to life so through a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication from the folks in the bottled water industry and Joni's efforts putting together these, we were able to stop the bottled water tax from being put on. So very delighted with that. And Joni, would you tell us about the one positive thing that came out of the um, tax discussions? One of the major successes of the 2015 session was the passage of a click-through nexus, which is basically a modest step in the right direction towards e-fairness on the state level. While it's not a marketplace equity full national solution like that under consideration in Congress now, it is a step in the right direction and it does provide greater clarity for out-of-state retailers concerning their tax obligations and for some internet retailers to collect and remit Washington state sales taxes. One bill that we we're really excited that we we're able to work with very closely the Attorney General Bob Ferguson and his staff was something called data breach. Now data breach has been occurring around the country and in our state and affecting uh, millions of consumers. So the Attorney General brought forward a bill, worked very closely with the Retail Association and other associations on crafting a workable solution that would crack down on the criminals, but at the same time protect the customers and the retailers and the other industries that collect and retain data for the use by their consumers and their businesses. So we, we thank Attorney General Ferguson for working very closely with us and coming up with a workable solution that we think will help deter data breach from occurring in the future. It won't stop it, but it will help definitely in that respect. Yeah, another major success of the 2015 session was the defeat of two bills that would have negatively impacted retailers of all sizes across the state of Washington. The first one is House Bill 1355, which would have raised the minimum wage to $12 an hour over the next four years when Washington already has the highest minimum wage in the country. The bill passed the House by a narrow party line vote. It went to the Senate where it received a hearing and we were able to stop it. There's a lot of speculation that we will be seeing a ballot initiative in 2016. The next bill that took us all the way to the end of session is House Bill 1472, 
which would have required retailers as importers or distributors of products to conduct alternatives assessment testing for safer chemicals in those products. The bill was tied to the governor's proposed update to the state's water quality rules and uh, fish consumption rates, which really split business interests this year, with some advocating for a compromise to the bill in order, prote in order to protect that draft rule. The main sticking point with the bill had to do with the definitions, and we consistently argued that retailers, as importers and distributors of goods, should not be considered a manufacturer for products that they simply sell and don't have the expertise or the control over the manufacture of those products or the chemical uses. We know that this bill will be back again next year and we'll continue to advocate for policies that make sense. Thanks, Joni. What was really frustrating for me on that bill was that the Department of Ecology already has the authority to conduct alternative assessments and chemical action plans. They simply don't want to pay for them. So they want to require retailers and manufacturers to foot the bill for something they should be doing, which is just plain wrong. So you're right. We'll be fighting this again in the future and protecting the interests of retailers. We do very much appreciate you watching and um, hope you'll continue to work with the Retail Association in the future. And a special thank you to Retail Association Services, Inc. for sponsoring this broadcast.